Previously, we've looked at our electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Where we're using a nucleophilic attack from our electron-rich aromatic ring to our electrophile, in this case our, our nitronium ion, which we get in our nitration reaction, and we're producing our substituted aromatic ring. In this video, we'll look at how other substituents will affect this reaction. So if we add a group onto our ring, it's going to affect our reaction with that uh, nitronium ion as we create our uh, nitro substituted ring system. Now, of course, one of the important things that we've learned is that um, this first step here is the most important or rate limiting step in our reaction. Um, this, of course, is due to the formation of our unstable arenium cation intermediate where the loss of our um, aromaticity and that carbocation forming within our ring system um, destabilizes our structure over here um, overall. So anything that we can do in this first step will increase the rate of our re reaction overall. If we increase the rate of our nucleophilic attack or if we increase the stability of our um, arenium cation, then we can increase the rate of our reaction. So as we look at the substituent effect, or how new groups added onto our aromatic ring will affect our reaction, we need to consider how it will affect that initial rate limiting step. So if we compare a couple of um, substituted aromatic rings, so here we have a methyl group added on. This would, of course, create uh, toluene. Um, here we have several fluorines added on in a trifluoro arrangement on our single carbon here. So when we compare our two aromatic rings now, um, in the case of our, our toluene, we've added on carbon as essentially an additional source of electrons. So that carbon adds additional electrons due to the electrons around a carbon atom. On the other hand, when we add that carbon with our fluorines attached, our electronegative fluorines will pull electrons away. Right? So if we show our bond dipoles for each of those carbon-fluorine bonds, they're all pulling electrons away from that carbon, and then also overall pulling electrons away from our aromatic ring. So we refer to these two groups as um, electron donating. In the case of our methyl group for toluene, or electron withdrawing. In the case of our, our trifluoro group. And since we're either donating electrons or withdrawing electrons away from our aromatic ring, we're going to affect that nucleophilic attack from our aromatic ring. So in the case of our electron donating group, um, since we're effectively donating additional electron density to our ring, we're going to increase the rate of the reaction because we're going to be more nucleophilic with that higher electron density. Over here with our electron withdrawing group, with all these electronegative fluorines greedily pulling those electrons away, we end up decreasing the reaction rate because we have a lower electron density now in our aromatic ring. So that's the first effect that we'll see in terms of our, our substituents. We can have groups that are electronegative that will tend to pull electrons away and slow down our substitution reaction, whereas groups that are electron donating that have extra electrons can donate them to the ring and increase the rate of our electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Now there's a second effect that we can look at um, when we think about the um, regioselectivity of our substitution reaction. So if we look at a, a substituted benzene ring and we are adding a nitro group and a nitration reaction, there's three different possibilities for where we can put that. So we can add it in an ortho position relative to our original methyl group. So that would put our new nitro group 
adjacent to our methyl group. That's what we mean by ortho. Or we could put it in a meta position where there's one carbon separating our two carbons that have the uh, substituents. Our methyl group up here, our nitro group down here. Or we can have a para substitution where our two groups are on opposite sides. Now, as it turns out, we won't get an equal mixture of each of these products. Um, we'll actually prefer to form the para and the ortho substituted um, products. And I'll show you why this is. Uh, we're going to have to consider the structure of our intermediate here in order to see why this is. So let's first look at our ortho case. So if we're going to substitute at the ortho position, that means we're going to attack our nitronium ion from a double bond connected to one of our adjacent carbons. So let's show that arrow coming out, attacking our positively charged electrophilic nitrogen in the center of our nitronium ion. We of course need to move our electrons out of the way to make room for that new bond. And we produce Again, our rhenium cation intermediate. So we're going to have a new bond here. And here's our hydrogen there as well. We get our carbocation produced next to where our original double bond was um, because, of course, we're losing those electrons um, in that double bond as they're attacking and forming the new bond to our, our nitro group. So as we look at our arenium cation intermediate here, as always in an aromatic ring system, we have the possibility for resonance structures here. So we can move our double bond. We would form a resonance structure. So we move our double bond here. And now we have the carbocation there. We can move that double bond again. And we create another resonance structure with our carbocation moved over here. Um, and of course, um, we could again move our bond back to shift back to our other two resonance structures. Now as you take a look at these three resonance structures, um, notice the substitution pattern of our carbocation. So initially we're sitting here at a secondary carbon, so we have a secondary carbocation. We move our resonance structure and we create another secondary carbocation. But now as we move to our third resonance structure, we've created a tertiary carbocation. Now as we know from previous lectures, a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation. So in our arenium cation intermediate here, we have a resonance structure with a more stable carbocation compared to um, the arenium cation that we would have if we didn't have our, our methyl substituted aromatic ring. And so our arenium cation intermediate is actually more stable because of that methyl group and therefore we can increase the rate of reaction. Let's compare with what happens if we substitute at a meta position. So we're performing the same reaction. The only thing we're changing is that this time we're going to add our nitro group on at this position. So we can attack from the same um, location using the double bond, which is a 
adding on to the other carbon. So we're adding our nitro group here. There's our extra hydrogen there. Our carbocation gets produced there. And there's our two other double bonds. Now again, just as with our um, ortho reaction, we can move our double bonds and form resonance structures. So as that double bond moves, we get our new double bond here and our new carbocation up there. We can shift again to form another resonance structure. So now we have our double bond up here, our carbocation down there, and our third resonance structure. Now as we take a look at our, our carbocations and our resonance structures here, we have a secondary carbocation again, another secondary carbocation, and in our final case, we still have a secondary carbocation. So as we compare the meta substitution versus our ortho substitution previously, we see that in the meta substitution, we only ever get secondary carbocations. Essentially, our carbocation jumps over that spot with our tertiary carbon there, and so we never actually get that extra stabilization effect from that tertiary carbocation in this case. So our meta substitution doesn't have a more stable tertiary carbocation intermediate. So simply because of the lack of that more stable tertiary carbocation intermediate, our rate for this reaction when we're doing that meta substitution is going to be somewhat slower. Because again, if our intermediate is slightly less stable, our reaction rate is going to be slightly slower. Stability of that intermediate determines the rate of the reaction. So our ortho rate will be higher than our meta rate, and so because of that, the amount of ortho product that we produce will be higher than the amount of, of meta product that we produce. Um, our third possibility, the, the para uh, substitution pattern, will also lead to a tertiary carbocation intermediate. Um, so what we'll see overall then is that um, our ortho and para substituted products will be preferred. So the majority of our, our products will have the ortho or, or para substitution pattern. Um, and then meta will be, um, will have less meta product produced relative to our, our ortho and para product. Um, and I feel free to uh, try to draw out the, the para product as a, uh, an exercise and you'll be able to see that uh, it does indeed produce our tertiary carbocation. So just the difference between that tertiary carbocation versus the secondary carbocation in our intermediate determines the overall effect on the rate and therefore the overall percentage of our final products produced.